Today, I'm excited to be with Sarah Santa Croce, and we're going to be talking about the gentle marketing revolution. First, let me say hi to you, Sarah. Hi, hi thanks Jared. for being here. So nice to be here. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to share your work with my people because you have uh, been uh, reframing how marketing is typically done into, into what you call the seven Ps. Mm -hmm. And I thought that it was so interesting that I think everyone watching this is going to find it interesting too. But let me just first say that your background, first of all, you're in Switzerland. So we have this international uh, connection here. Um, we met through Paul Zelizer of Awarepreneurs. So thank you so much, Paul. Thank you, and Paul. Yeah. And you, um, your experience was originally in more traditional marketing. So you've, you kind of have that uh, background and you know marketing really well. And then uh, in the last decade or so, you um, started consulting people on their LinkedIn marketing. Right. So LinkedIn profiles and LinkedIn strategy, et cetera. So uh, for those of you who want to learn a lot more about LinkedIn and get your LinkedIn game going, Sarah is a great person to turn to for that. Uh, and then besides LinkedIn, more recently, you also started this thing called the Gentle Marketing Revolution, which is what we're going to talk about where you are reframing marketing as a way that is, uh, that is more um, aligned, I think, for how most of us want to actually do it. So, mm -hmm. so thanks for doing this interview. And uh, where would you like to start? Maybe you can tell us how you decided to make that gentle marketing revolution. What kind of inspired you to yeah, I think that's a good place to start. Um, so I've been running a, an online LinkedIn consulting business for uh, over 12 years. And, you know, living in this online world as, as you are and as you know, George, it's, it is uh, a competitive world. It is, um, you know, we are being trained a certain way to do marketing a certain way. And for the longest time, um, I was doing what everybody else told me to do. And then I was telling my people to do it this way. And, you know, so many shoulds and, and this is how it's done. So eventually, um, I turned 40 uh, a bunch of years ago and, and Brene Brown calls it the, the midlife unraveling. That's really what happened for me. I'm like, what am I doing? This is not even fun anymore. Uh, I, I, I can't continue doing the marketing the, the way I've been doing all this time. It, I felt so out of integrity that I really realized that I needed to change something. You know, we don't usually change unless things are so bad that we can't keep going the same way. So, so that's um, when I said, "Well, I need to change something." And and really, this this idea of gentle marketing just kind of was downloaded to me. And I was like, one morning I woke up and I had this message that I had to reserve the domain name, the Gentle Marketing Revolution, and it kind of goes with my story and and that also had to do with the fact that i felt like i was hiding behind a mask for so many years because i never really brought my full story to the picture to my business so i grew up in a in a hippie community so my parents uh, bought an apartment building with six other families and really we were as kids we were raised in this commune um that you know, it was all about peace and love and um, also very political. So very um, uh, left wing and, and my parents were all very engaged. And so these values of community and equality and, and, and all of that was really in, ingrained into me, but I felt like it was embarrassing because as a kid, if you grow up differently than anybody else, it's always embarrassing. I was embarrassed by my parents that they didn't have a car, that they came to pick me up at school with their bikes and things like that. And so I thought for the longest time that that's something I had to hide, especially like going, like focusing on LinkedIn, right? Uh, I chose the most stiff professional platform, if you will. And so, uh, yeah, for all these years, I, I never brought my upbringing to the picture. I just had to pretend to be like, you know, this professional consultant. And, and so when that unraveling happened, that all came into the light. And I felt like so relieved being able to take off my mask. And, and I felt this calling that, 
since my parents created something revolutionary, if you want, you know, a different way to, to raise their kids and be in, in society, I felt like, well, maybe that's what I need to do. I need to show all these entrepreneurs that marketing doesn't have to be a certain way. You don't have to follow all these shoulds and, and, and that you can really just go back to who you are. And, and that's kind of what the seven P's are about instead of focusing so much on our target audience and our avatar and, you know, who are we serving, which is, you know, still a good concept. But I felt that I spent 12 years focusing too much on the audience and the wrong audience without really paying attention to myself first, what I really wanted, what my values were, what my worldview was and all of that. Mm, I love this. I love that you are you know, kind of aligning with your, uh, with your roots and with, right. uh, your true values and bringing that out. So this is why gentle marketing was born. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'm going to share my screen because, uh, you created this beautiful mandala of what gentle marketing is. I want everyone to see it and I'd love for you to kind of talk through this. Uh, would that be okay? Yeah, that sounds right, great. Let's, it's let's actually it. my son. Uh, he's 16. His name is Simon, and he drew that for yeah. me on uh, on his computer. So, yeah, so it's, it's a proud mama moment. <laughs> yes. So we can see here that you kind of list out the traditional marketing, the seven P's of traditional marketing, and I've taken marketing classes, so I recognize these too. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have got the gentle marketing revolution. So. Maybe you could talk us through what the, maybe the difference between the, be, between the two, or, or, or maybe, maybe just briefly describe what each of these traditional ones mean, maybe? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, you see that some things have changed and some things haven't. Um, what is still the same is the people. It's just that we don't start with our people. So again, this is our client or our avatar or our mm. target audience. And in, in the a traditional marketing model, that's often where the seven P's start. We talk about our ideal client. It's all customer centric. And, um, and so the, for me, the seven, the, the people, uh, module comes later after we paid, uh, more attention to ourselves. Uh, then there's one P uh, that talks about physical evidence. So that's kind of signage and uh, location and venue and all of these things. Well, they're not as important in our online world anymore. So I completely took them out and I replaced them with whatever, uh, either, either the passion, personal power or partnership. So let's talk about passion. Um, Passion, or it could also be called purpose. It's um, you know starting with paying attention to what, who we are, what we want, what our values are, what our worldview is. All of these things that um, are about us, the entrepreneur, and how we bring passion to our business. So that's the the passion um, module. Then. Um, if you go back up, yeah, then there's the, the product. We still talk about the product in, uh, in gentle marketing. We are still um, selling a product or uh, the product also means services. It's just that we focus more on a, um, a product that is um, not only functional, but it, that it's also beautiful. So I, I focus a lot on uh, design, the way that Daniel H. Pink defines it, where we are no longer just interested in whether it works. We assume that we want something that works, but we also want to really emotionally connect with our ideal client, and, and therefore it needs to be beautiful and whimsical and, and, and all of these good um, attributes that, that make us emotionally connect with our clients. Then um, here we have uh, pricing, so that stays the same with a, a, a big focus on authentic pricing and fair pricing. So, so it's not just you know, numbers, but it's the, the ethics that go with the numbers. So that's really important also, I think, for the conscious client. It's, it's having different options available for different budgets. You talk about that as well, uh, George, so you know what I mean. 
Um, and then the, the next one would be promotion. We still have that in today's, um, in the gentle marketing as well. I think a lot of entrepreneurs today are overwhelmed because there's too many options. They're, they're, they're being told that they have to be everywhere. And so in my P for promotion, I actually go into uh, really finding out, and we've done that uh, via the personal power module, really figuring out, well, what is it for you that lights you up? I know that you, George, you're, you're great on Facebook Lives, right? Um, but someone else, they, they're being told they have to do Facebook Lives and they're like, oh, no, I can't do it, right? So it, it really is figuring out the one or two things. For me, it's podcasting. One or two things that really uh, light you up, that, that you enjoy, and then focusing on those in the promotion module. Mm -hmm. And then uh, finally, we have process um, that is really all about um, you know kind of the customer um, experience and I had that in there for the first edition of the gentle marketing program and then we kind of decided all together it was a beta round that partnership was much more important than process yeah. and I know you talk about collaboration and that's what we're doing right here as well right collaboration partnerships growing together not wanting to do it all alone that is a big part of marketing as well and so I just had to bring partnership in there and which one did we miss personal power personal power is finding out really about who you are your worldview I talk a lot about um, bringing more of you your stories we talk about storytelling bring that into your marketing rather than always focusing us on the customer, bring more of you to your marketing so that you attract your ideal clients, the, the ones that you really enjoy working with instead of like me in the past, attracting the wrong kind of clients. Yeah. So I, I love that, it. I love it. Um, so I want to ask you about this. Uh, if you, uh, if you were advising somebody and Oh, by the way, I want to share, share the rest of the page with people. This is at, uh, you can get to it by the, the, the gentle, uh, you know, the gentle marketing revolution.com will take you there. And, you know, the page has other information on it. Um, and of course it has the actual mandala that we were talking about and this, tell us about this, tell, tell us about this program. This is a training program that goes in depth into these things. Um, but tell us more. Yes, so it. I started it as a, uh, I spent all of 2019 uh, basically running uh, beta rounds, three beta rounds oh. for the program because mm -hmm. after creating many programs for LinkedIn and um, I really wanted to make sure that I created something that was actually needed, that people actually said, yes, that's exactly what I needed. So I kind of co-created the po program with participants Yes. And what it is, it's, it's a, yeah, it, it, it's a program that instead of focusing on one thing um, like LinkedIn or Facebook ads or, you know, generating leads with some other lead generation tool, it kind of takes a big picture approach again and says, well, if you don't actually look at the big picture and think, um, you know, what do I want for my business? What kind of clients do I want to attract? How do I want to attract them? And first of all, do the hard inner work. And it doesn't always have to be hard, but sometimes it is because as an entrepreneur, a lot of the success has to do with our confidence, has to do with our money stories. So all of that is the kind of the, the work that goes into the personal power, looking at that you know, those stories that, that we bring as an entrepreneur. And then from there going, okay, so now that I know all of that, how do I now tell these stories so that they attract the right kind of people and which platforms do I tell them on? How do I collaborate? So that's the, the, really the curriculum of the program. And I, I, I run it live through, two times per year in January and in September, just because I like the, you know, the collaboration and the, 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 the live group. And then the rest of the year, it's, it's an online program where people go through their 
through the videos and the assignments and then they have access to a Trello board where they, where they ask questions and, and uh, so that's that's interesting now um, if somebody joins in the middle of the year what happens when you when you do it live again do they do they uh, do they have access to it how does that work yeah, uh, so if they join now, they get access to the online version, right? And right. then uh, in September, I'll invite them to kind of pay a little upgrade because obviously okay. the, the live it. program is, is uh, more expensive yes. and, and definitely join at a, at a lower rate um, cool. in September. Cool, great. Yes, I was, I was going to ask you when we we're looking at the mandala, like if there's a, a, an order to what you recommend, and this is the order that yeah. you recommend people go through right like you you kind of start with passion here um you, you start with your yeah like what really drives you right mm -hmm. and your uniqueness and then talking about the people that will most benefit from what you do and then the actual offering itself product and then the pricing and then how do you actually get the word out and then using partnerships etc very very good that's awesome i love it yeah so i will of course include the link in the notes of the video so folks can check it out if anyone has any questions about this they uh what's the best way for them to contact you about it um I, there's a form on my website where they can reach out sarasinacroce.com yeah, or i'm that. always best reached on on linkedin still that's still my main platform where i hang out a lot so just send me an invite and, and mention that you've seen us talk on the cool. on this uh yeah. episode and you have, you've got a podcast, of course, um, that yeah, uh, people yeah. should check out. Mm -hmm. um, uh, can we talk a little bit about LinkedIn, actually, since LinkedIn yeah, is such a big, big part of your, um, your work? Um, well, uh, I mean, people can look you up on LinkedIn, so I'll, I'll, unless you, you think we should look at it. Uh, um, what, what, what's like one of the biggest, I guess, misconceptions people have about LinkedIn that, mm -hmm. that should get cleared up? Mm -hmm. I think the biggest one is still that LinkedIn is for B2B. Um, that's what most people heard, you know, 10 years ago, and that's still what sticks to them. B2B and, meaning business to business, meaning like big company to big company. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so they're kind of intimidated by that thought and think, well, you know, who am I? I'm not working with companies, so what should I do on there? And so. I, yeah, I, what I try to tell them that it's not even a, a question of B2B or B2C business to uh, consumer. It's a, it's a question of human to human, age to age. So even if you are, let's say you're a coach and you're working uh, with companies, like you want to do workshops in, in companies, even so, you're still doing business with the human in the company. You're, a company is an entity of humans. So in the end, uh, we don't really care whether it's companies that pay your bills or it's individuals that pay your bills. They're all humans. And so I think that is the biggest shift that people realize oh i had no idea like i yeah that's what is it's all about and so even though linkedin is kind of the or has this reputation of being the the chamber of commerce of platforms of social media kind of the boring one it has changed a lot like a lot right and uh and it's it's no longer that kind of platform so so some people like the old folks they actually think oh my god it's it's like facebook now or or worse like instagram so so it definitely has changed a lot and i think it's it's an interesting platform if you're working with any kind of professional yeah and what would you say is the so like i see i see a lot of people think okay i'm just going to update my linkedin profile and then i'm done you know, right. and, and yeah, that is definitely part of it, having an optimized LinkedIn profile. Right. But what's like the overall strategy you typically recommend to solopreneurs like us, maybe people who are watching and listening are, you know, healers, they are mentors of some kind, they are coaches, uh, they have some kind of service to provide or some program to sell. What's, what's your the overall strategy on LinkedIn? What's your recommendation? 
Right. Yeah. It, it's funny because just yesterday on a podcast, the, this person also was surprised that you can even share content on LinkedIn. They hadn't even mm -hmm. realized that that's an option. So, so yeah, LinkedIn is not just your LinkedIn profile. That's the beginning, but, but then it, it's pretty much similar to any of the other platforms where you, you know, share content, position yourself as an expert in your field and, and engage with, with the people in your network. So um, it, it's about building a targeted network. So, so that is a bit different from, from some of the other platforms because you actually are in control. You can choose who you're adding to your network, you can choose who you're reaching out to uh, for, let's say, potential clients and adding them to your network, um, which, um, you know, is, is a bit different than some of the other platforms. I'm thinking of Twitter where that's not an option, for example. So, so it's still about creating a content strategy where you, you know, you really position yourself as an expert. And, and from there, as you know, you do on Facebook, it then leads to being seen as the expert, being an authority and creating um, basically a relationship that then leads to business. Yes, absolutely. And when you are adding people to your network, I mean, um, how does, how do you find the right people? Maybe that's one question. Like on, on LinkedIn, do you, do you search using keywords or do you, yeah, what's your yeah. recommendation there? Yeah, so, so LinkedIn is, is one of the, the great platforms really like re, that's what recruiters, that, that's what they do. They find yes. candidates by searching via keywords. And so as entrepreneurs, we can do the same thing. Um, for example, right now I'm working uh, with a client who is in e-commerce. And so he is looking for clients who have an e-commerce site. So clearly one of the keywords is going to be e-commerce. And that's what we're looking for to, to find um, clients that fit his uh, ideal client description. And, and from there, you know, LinkedIn spits out a list of profiles, potential profiles. You need to actually go through them. And, and um, I, I'm a big um, believer that automation does not work. It doesn't work on any platform, but especially on LinkedIn. Um, because again, it's, it's humans that are actually behind the profiles. And, and by now, you know, I think we're all smart enough to smell the minute we, we see an automated message and we're like, eh, not so interested. And, and so that's why building real relationships takes more time and it may be taking longer, but that's the only way. Uh, I, I just don't see it working how we can send out thousands of automated um, invitations and expect real business from it. In fact, but I think that's one of the um, things that people don't like about LinkedIn mm -hmm. uh, is that they get these kind of spam messages or people right. who pretend that they've looked at their profile, <laughs> but they don't yeah. really care. It's, it's a lot of it's automated. So I'm so glad that you're kind of uh, sharing this message of hey, let, let's make authentic relationships here. So yeah. um, any, uh, you have a lot on this and we'll talk about it, but what, what's, what's like one quick tip you can share about optimizing our profile? So because uh, the profile itself, there's a lot to it. Um, right. Is there something you want to say about that? And just in a minute, you know, just like really give us a taste of what, what, what you do with that. Yeah, I would say that still today, the headline is probably the, the mm -hmm. most important yes. part of the yes. profile, really optimizing that so that you don't just say a lot of coaches I work with um, or healers or people like that, they still think the name of their company is more important than their own expertise. And so often you will see founder of dot, 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 or owner at dot, dot, dot. And that, that's not a good way to present yourself as an expert because it doesn't tell us um, what you're good at. So really focusing on what you're good at, what you bring to the table, and nobody, nobody really cares about our company name. Let's just face it. It's, yeah. it's just not interesting to people. They care about you and not your company. Yeah. Um, so how can people, so how, what do you, tell us what you provide in terms of LinkedIn um, expertise and, and uh, services and uh, how can people kind of work with you on that? 
Yeah, so, so it, it, it starts with the profile, as we said, all the roads somehow lead back to your profile. And that's yeah. where you first, um, you know, really position yourself as, a, as an expert. And as an introvert, I always say it's, it's nice to have that LinkedIn profile because you don't have to do any selling anymore after that. It's all on the profile. And if people are somehow interested in you, that profile sells you because Yes. You don't want to add any selling in your, um, you know, in your messages or, or in your outreach. So, yes. so the profile should really do the job of, of selling um, your expertise. And, and so what I help people uh, do is, is, first of all, yeah, improve their profiles, optimize them, make sure that they get found, that they position themselves as experts. And then I also offer coaching to then take it further and really um, use LinkedIn to proactively, um, I don't like this term anymore, generate leads, but what we're tr really trying to do is, is build relationships that then lead to business. Nice, nice, wonderful. Well, Sarah, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. And I hope folks who watched this found it interesting, the seven Ps, are kind of a nice way, nice framework to help us think through, um, you know, our own strategy for, for marketing and business. And then LinkedIn, of course, uh, people can check out your services and your profile to find out more. Um, any other sort of words before we uh, we finalize this interview, finish up? Anything to send us off with? Maybe just if people are interested in the seven Ps, they can go over to sarasenacroce.com one, the number one page. That's my opt-in with the one page marketing plan. And it kind of gives, a, kind of takes them through with um, seven emails, one per day, through thinking about their one page marketing uh, uh -huh. plan in, in the form of the mandala and right. you know, kind of reflect on who they are, uh, what their passion is, what their uh, personal powers are, et cetera, et cetera. So, so that'd be a good yeah. place. To so, so it's sarasantacroce.com slash the number one, just the, the number one page, P-A-G-E. So that's it. Okay, cool. Sarah, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, those who have any questions, please feel free to comment below and I'll make sure Sarah sees it. Thank Thanks, Sarah. You. Thanks so much, George.